Hello and welcome to another video here on Trihack and we're going to talk about day 10 today on Advent of Cyber. Now we have this worst grumpy company we're going to do some SQL injection on and we all know why you are here, you already read the guide, you understand what SQL injection is, so I'm going to skip all that right on. So first of all we need to do some uh, injection and enabling of the XP command shell which basically enables us to execute files directly on the SQL Server. Now, it is required that to be a Microsoft SQL Server in this particular case, and luckily for us, it is. So it is kind of important that you already read so far the guide, understand what's going on, because I'm not really going to explain all the basics right now in this video. There are plenty of other videos probably doing that. Okay, so <clears throat> enabling the uh, XP command shell, we need to look at the URL right here and we need to execute a string directly into the age variable. Now we're using the age variable because we can inject into that and that is vulnerable to SQL injection. So if we go to this page here and for example just press a gift shop and then start my gift search, then we are on the page called gift search.php, which I think is one of the questions gifsearch.php, there we go. Now we get to the defaced website. Uh, the defaced website, is it defaced? Yeah, I guess it is, you know, no one knows. Anyways, analyze the SQL error, so we have to do some error stuff, we just press search, I guess. And then in the age, you know, we're gonna put the, the hyphen, the, the single quotation, and analyze the actual uh, data being put to the screen. And the question is, what ODPC driver is being used in the back. So one, two, three, four, five, six informations. So we probably need this part right there without the special character in the end. And that would be right. Inject the equal one, equal one condition. Okay, so we need to do something up here and say like one equal one. And it is not exactly what they want us to do, it would seem. So it's probably the old one with the or in, in place. And let's see if we are getting any flags. Seems like we are not. Whoops, don't copy paste all of that. So what exactly did, did they want me to do? Put in some or one equal one. Something like that. I kind of think I did that. Did they want me to put? I don't know how they they program this, but this shouldn't really give us. Yeah, we need the uh, the tick. So we're gonna do the tick. And I just don't see any flags. Am I blind? Message quotation. Blah blah blah. And they want me to put in a flag, right? Maybe they want me to comment everything out afterwards with a double dash. Let me see. We are getting all the data printed to the screen, which is normal in this SQL case, because it is recursive. There we have it, flag in the bottom. So just select everything, so we are good to go. All right, so put the flag in. What flag is the node file? G Reister left behind on the system, Gretster? I wouldn't know. So let's just take a look at what's going on here. Uh, teenage adults, gadgets, meet the elves. Uh, what do they want me to do about that? So maybe they want us to do uh, something about injecting the actual payload because in this particular uh, exercise today we're going to do a reverse shell. Now the reverse shell today is something we generated an exe file as an exe file so it's been an executable file and we're going to do that with a program called MSS Venom which is a part of 
Metasploit. And Metasploit is really, really nifty program we're gonna talk about today. So basically we're gonna say like, we're gonna generate this uh, payload right here, which is a reverse TCP connection. So it is the server we are injecting it to that's connecting to us, which is why we need our IP address right here, which is gonna be my IP address of this machine, which is 10.11.10.220. It's your try hack me local IP address, not that one, but you're on your system. The port doesn't matter really too much, but we can keep it there. And the other one is just the format of X and O, the output name reverse.exe. So let's take this line right here and put it into a document because I like to work from a document. You know why? Then let's go to a terminal window, zoom in a bit, and type IP tech A. Uh, sorry. Uh, space and take the IP address of your own is Tanjiro on my machine probably the same yours then go here and say replace that IP address then you're gonna go ahead and take that open new terminal I'm gonna go ahead and make day 10 and go into day 10 I'm gonna paste the command just wait a second to it's really fast and after that we're gonna go ahead and start a um, Python web server, which is because we need to, in a way, the machine we're hacking, you need to download this file to its own. So we need to prepare a few things. First of all, we can just start the Python web server by copy pasting the command, straightforward. It's gonna be on port 8000. So we're gonna remember the 8000 as the port for our machine on the web server. Now we need to prepare the machine we're going to hack. So let's go back to the gift search and press go to the gift search and just search and we got the normal parameters back in the URL. Okay, so we need to enable, as they talk about right here, that some servers and blah, blah, weak configurations, bad configuration, insecure configuration, very, very normal thing to have on web servers and systems just in all, you know, normality in the world, <laughs> people forget. Anyways, um, we can, by doing that, say, hey, let's execute some files. And by doing that, we basically can take this line here and inject that directly after the, uh, what are you gonna call it, a single quotation today. So put it in and just say like, boom, there we go, enter, and nothing happened, but should it really? So we injected something and it should basically give the SQL server some commands to execute. But because it's not really a part of the web page, of the output of the web page, Nothing's being shown, it's just boom. So it should be working right now. Then we're going down here and execute the next command, which basically is this one here. So you exec, this is the command, this is the, the, the command, uh, sorry, this is the, the call to the commands. And we're gonna say, call this URL right there and download the file on port 8000, 8000. The files reverse that exe and we're gonna save it something like that. So we're gonna take all this. And pay attention that they do talk about when we do this, you should be able to see on your terminal window that the file is being downloaded. So if that is the case, this works. So let's go here, remove the old one, insert the new one, press enter. It took a while, looks fine. And we saw nothing right here. Now that is because I forgot to put in my IP address. How lucky of me. So one more time. Copy the command, put it in, it's okay, and now we saw something happened. So it is been downloaded to the actual um, server, so let's go back again to the tutorial and see we're going to start a netcat listener now, and the netcat listener is a program, it's just a flat suck client really, you know, it's just a program that says, hey, any connections coming from port 4444, which was the port we uh, set in the payload, and basically is a TCP connection in most occasions, let them just connect to us. Let's go back. Let's just start the web server, start the netcat listener. Now, okay, when I now do the next step, you should see some text here of some sort, and that will actually mean that we got connection through. Uh, something like that, yes. So we can go ahead and type commands. We are inside the system, typing directly commands in the system. 
So the next one here is gonna say I'm gonna do the exec um, called the uh, command shell, and we will execute this file that we injected. So let's take all of that. Remember the small single quotation mark. Delete the old one. Put the new one in. And now we see that the browser is like doing, 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 doing. Basically means that the tab is hanging. You know, it's it's it got some sort of connection, which is also called the web shell. Now you cannot type ls. You need to type dir here, for example, because this is a DOS machine. So you're gonna go back here now, and now that we have a shell on the box, we have the direct connection to the machine, the server we're hacking with the actual website on, and now we can do stuff. So we just type dir in the very first part of it, and we see this is a very interesting, <sighs> I'm being ironic right now, <laughs> output with a lot of DLL files. It's not interesting at all, but DLL files is a dynamic link library, contains code for Windows machines to be executed, basically. So you just want to see what's going on here, and it seems like nothing really is going on here. So let's go back to the questions one more time and see what's going on. Now we can go ahead and type stuff like who am I and see who we are. We can also go to the users directory, which is kind of normal on Windows machine. Let's just, first of all, verify who am I? We are NT system, sorry, NT service. We are probably the user that is used for the SQL machine or the server on the, the box. Let's go into C colon backslash users and do that. And here we see stuff like public and administrator. I want to go to the administrator and see what's there. You know, there's a lot of things. Go to the desktop. And that is probably where they usually hide stuff, which is the case. Let's type the note. Text type is the same as cat in, uh, in Windows. So hey, hacker, whatever, whatever. I would receive your bytes, Bitcoin payment, and yada yada yada. We got a flag, and the flag is the proof that we actually found. We need to find this file. So. Next one, what is the flag when you're starting the web page? We need to restore the web page in some way. And it says something about run restore website.bad, which is right there. So we can just basically say that, paste it in, and you know, website's now restored. We should be able to go back to web page and say something like Hocus Pocus. And there we have it. The flag of the restored web page. Submit, complete, and done. So that's really it. It was a kind of long one anyways. <laughs> it could be like a lot longer if I decided to explain everything in, in a long, boring manner. But I wanted to spare that for you today because I guess you can read all this if you like to read it. At the end of the day, it's normal, classic, OWASP vulnerability for open web application security project, classic security misconfiguration vulnerability. We wouldn't be able to verify this unless actually trying something because you need to hit on, send some traffic to the actual, you know, MS SQL server, Microsoft SQL server, and see how it respond. In this particular case, it didn't respond to this in any certain way, but you know, it kind of just say, eh, you execute the command, I say nothing. Might as well give it a shot and generate a reverse shell and then go ahead and try to, to see if you can download it and then further on to execute it. This would require that you know something about Windows to have some sort of knowledge about Windows in a certain way. You know, Windows temp, you know, something like that is same as slash temp TMP on Linux machine. So you would probably need to know that and have a little, you know, knowledge about Windows as well. So I'm really looking forward to day 11 now and really hope you learned something about this, even though that I went through it pretty fast. And I think that is what most of you want. So I'm gonna try and do that from now on. All right, so have a really nice day and see you again tomorrow. <laughs>